Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we are going to talk about load unload drills, specifically a rotating load drill to the back of a truck. Why a truck? Because that's what you load and unload a lot. So I find myself moving things to this height quite a bit. We will talk about other versions of this drill in the future. If you were to do this in a gym, like a CrossFit box, you would have two CrossFit boxes. CrossFit boxes are 20 inches by 24 inches by 30 inches usually. And you could then combine those in different ways to get different heights. 30 plus 30 is 60 inches. That is five feet high. That's a nice high height if you're in a CrossFit box. So think about the variables that you're gonna have with this drill. You have the weight of the kettlebell and you have the height of the box. In a previous video, we had talked about just plain old load and unload, which is a nice basic drill which shows people the importance of hip snap, good spinal alignment, and having a good ability to create tension in this position. This position is very important in the real world. It's how you carry things that are heavy for the most part, cross your shoulder or out in front of you. I very rarely see people backload anything. Trying to backload a giant log is done in movies. I think Schwarzenegger did it in Commando. No, he did side load in that one. But for the most part, front load is where you're at when you're moving objects. That's why things like front presses with clubs and maces are very important. As you press a weight out in front of you, you will contract your back muscles in order to keep yourself upright. Thus the term, the work person has a strong back and that's what makes them valuable. We are gonna turn this into a rotating drill. As usual, I would like you to point your feet straight ahead so that we're not getting a lot of turnout because I don't want knee collapse. People who work a lot can end up with bad dynamics through repetitive movement. So if you're training to do this stuff, make sure you're training with the best alignment possible. We are going to move the kettlebell. We are gonna do the first version of this drill with the kettlebell in between our feet. We are going to pick it up any way we want, rotate and set it down. So think of this as a standing Russian twist. Pick it up. Come back to center, set it down, up, load, unload, load, unload. You will see that this version of the drill is kind of based on a kettlebell cheerleading drill that we talked about last, I don't know, December or January, where you rip it up off the ground, you catch underneath, and you set it down. Think, rip it up off the ground, get it towards order position, rotate to the side, press out in front of you and set it down. Start with a light weight. This is the hard part for most people, moving a weight away from their center with their feet pointed straight ahead. This is what gets most people in the beginning. Start with a light weight, develop your way up. The second version of this drill is we're not gonna put the kettlebell down between our feet. We're gonna pick it up and we are gonna put it outside of our foot line. People who work in gyms, kind of will oftentimes tell you movements like this are bad. I don't think they are because you do them every day in the real world when loading and unloading things. Pick it up, rotate to the outside, get it all the way down. You will notice you can either bend your legs to get it up or you can straight leg it, which is everything people tell you not to do. This type of movement is used a lot in old time strongman lifts stuff like this and doing a more straight leg version of it does require a lot of hamstring mobility like you should be able to easily put your fists flat on the ground before you try any version of that drill any version of that drill this drill can mess people up if they do not start with a light enough weight let's start with two feet straight ahead get down one leg drives forward one leg drives back that allows us to turn our hip bowl to one side, extend down, pick it up, <sighs> rotate all the way across, set it down, flash your hands, pick it up, <sighs> set it all the way down. <sighs> load <sighs> and unload. An exercise like this should come as part of a bigger program. It should definitely be integrated with something like heavy club swinging or heavy mace swinging or something like arc training to build your fundamentals of these knee and leg positions. This is something you develop 
with kettlebell outside cleans or a club outside cleans. And you should have a good foundation of that movement before you do a drill like this. All of these things, in my mind, interconnect because there are shared biomechanical alignments through all of them. Of course, you should do an equal number facing both directions. So I think there's really four things in this. Center, rotate to the right. Center, rotate to the left. Outside, rotate to the right. And outside, rotate to the left. There's so many ways you could program for this, but it's all based upon your available weights. Think about starting this with a light weight, probably 12K for most people. Most people are not gonna be used to this rotated pickup from a dead position. Not at all. Think about the range of weights that you would use with a kettlebell. You could do this up to 100 pounds. I don't really see too much point in going above, say, 70. I think the classical kettlebell weights of 16, 24, and 32K are perfect for this because those are the weights that people can move for long periods of time very efficiently. Once wood is bucked down, your goal is to get it in that range and then split it. Uh, so it, it can get up to 100 pounds, but those are rarer lifts. I prefer to work with medium weights for more repetitions to work on technique and endurance. That's just me. We're gonna continue to make these videos because I can think of about 80 versions of this exercise that I have used. Some of them are specific more towards forestry or farming, and there's a whole series of these drills specific to military guys as well. We'll continue to talk about it because I think it's a fun topic.